Hi guys, this is Abby from Witchcraft and Criminal History. How are you doing today? Good, that's good. Alright, today we're doing a criminal video. Okay, here we go. Alright, this video is on Graham Young. Graham Young is also known as the Teacup Poisoner. The Teacup Poisoner, Graham Young, was only was only around 14 or 15 when he first killed his first victim which was his stepmother no one in his family believed that he killed his mother because the autopsy had stated that um, that she died from an injury which she sustained in a car accident a few years prior but what it was it was her son or well, stepson Graham Young, from a very early age, had a love for taboo subjects. He loved Mein Kampf, which is a book written by the Nazis, so he was fascinated with Nazis. And he also had a fascination for poisons. He loved poisons, and he loved learning about them. But uh, and when he was at a certain, when he was about um, eleven or twelve years of age, Graham Young was gifted with um, a chemistry set for getting good grades at school. His parents didn't really think anything about it. They thought, you know, let's give him a present, you know, a treat for doing good good at school. The thing is that at school. The only subject Graham Young was flying with, was passing with flying colours, was chemistry. But his other subjects, not so much. But soon after he got the um, the chemistry set, members of his family started to fall ill, and not only his family but also his best friend. And the family just naturally thought that oh that he must have accidentally contaminated some of the kitchen utensils and that's how they were getting sick. They had no idea that it was intentional. And what he was doing, he was putting poison in in the um in their food. The poison poison they used the poison he used was antimony nowadays when you get poisons like that you actually have to go through the correct channels but back in the 1960s it was quite oh, quite common for people to have it. 1960s it was quite common for you to give it to children and same with the figure of the 1950s mine has things change Graham Young was born in 1946 so that's really, really a bit of a shocker that you can give poisons to a young kid. <laughs> but nowadays, if they have some chemistry set like that today, um, you it wouldn't even make it to the market. But back then, it was. But he was he was fascinated with antimony, and it was antimony, which you know is a heavy metal poison. And when you got heavy metal poisons, it goes into your bloodstream, and once it's in, you can't. It's locked in. You can't get rid of it. And especially if it hasn't been sorted out, it can cause long-term health issues, really long-term. And he was putting this poison in their family's food. Both Graham Young, he was very meticulous. He loved to take notes down. Like he put a little bit of antimony in his mother, his stepmother Molly's food, and would write notes about it, saying, "Oh, I gave her a couple of grams of antimony this morning. She vomited, and she vomited, say, three times." And he would do nights like that every single day. And when her mother was lying on the ground outside in excruciating agony 
through the antimony poisoning. The father looked up to the window and saw Graham Young just looking down at his stepmother with no emotions on his face. He had no emotions. It was like he was watching an experiment. But as I said earlier, they thought it was an injury she sustained in a car accident prior to her death. They didn't think it was... They didn't think that it was a murder. And sadly, she was actually cremated. Graham Young only got caught for for the poisonings when he attempted to kill his his father. He put antimony in his father's food to see how long he was going. And Graham Young is a psychopath. So when his father was in the hospital, he was saying, oh, you should check for antimony. It can't be arsenic. Arsenic does this. But antimony does this. He's got the symptoms for antimony. He doesn't have the symptoms for arsenic. And his father actually ordered him out of his room. And so what the police did, the police actually came around to see Graham Young and said to him, we think you're ready for university. You're very, very gifted in crimin in um, toxicology. And we want to discuss about poisons. And being the helpful psychopath Graham Young, it, Young was, he spilled his guts. He went on and on in regards to antimony. And of course... He got arrested and charged for the attempted murder of his father. They couldn't, however, charge him for the murder of his stepmother as the body was cremated. So he was, you know, sent to trial and he was sentenced to spend time in Broadmoor. Broadmoor, for anyone who don't really know, Broadmoor is a mental asylum for the criminally insane. It was opened, I think, around the mid-1800s, and it's still functional today. It's still functional, and it's still running to this very day, Broadmoor Asylum. It's one of the oldest mental asylums which is still running to this date. So he was sent to Broadmoor. But while he was in Broadmoor, like he was only about 14 when he went into Broadmoor, he was the youngest person in modern history to get sentenced to Broadmoor. But while he was in Broadmoor, weird things were happening. There was a suspected suicide in the um, asylum by one of his colleagues, Graham Young, or one of his fellow prisoners, sorry. Graham Young admitted that he poisoned him with arsenic. And he cultivated the arsenic from, I think it was from some bushes in the grounds of Lurundal Ment, I'm not Lurundal, sorry, from the mental asylum, from Broadmoor Mental Asylum. And he was able to cultivate the poison from that, but no one believed him. But Graham Young, he's a genius, and he realised that if he wanted to get out of Broadmoor, he had to look like he's reformed. He had to look like that he was healthy. And what I mean by healthy, I mean healthy up here. So he started to act normal. And eventually, they sent him out for a weekend with his sister, who was now married and had children of her own. And he actually wrote a letter to them saying, your friendly Frankenstein is coming home. You would naturally think a poisoner like Graham Young would probably poison the family dog. But Graham Young did because he knew that he had to be on his best behaviour. He knew it. So he couldn't do any poisoning. Eventually, Graham Young was released from prison. I'm from Broadmoor, sorry. And sent out to the public. But to say the least, Graham Young 
they actually help Graham Young get a job at a photography plant. And while at the photography plant, they allowed him to go near poisons. <laughs> How ironic. Highly ironic that they sent him to a place where there is poisons and he was a known poisoner. But because he was a juvenile when he was convicted, he had nothing on his record. Nothing. All his employer knew was that he was incarcerated at some but because he was a juvenile, they couldn't disclose it. They didn't tell him he had a fascination for poisons. They had absolutely no idea that he had a fascination for poison. And ultimately, this failed communication has actually cost the lives of two other men. Alright, this is part one. I will continue with part two. So, in, in the next video. Have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Have a great day and blessed be.